how this consolidation will work. But the goal is to have a prospectus for the consolidated institution by October 1 of, 9, of uh, 2014. That will then go to the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, which is the regional accrediting body. That group will have an opportunity to review it and consider approving the new consolidated institution at the meeting of that accrediting agency in December of 2014 with subsequent approval by the Board of Regents of, the, of that consolidated plan in, at their January 2015 meeting. That's the, the projected timeline. And then full implementation of the consolidation in time for fall semester 2015 with the approval in the middle of an academic year and a fiscal year um, there will still be some details that need to be worked out in spring of 2015. There's one thing I would like to clarify. Um, there's been, there have been reports in the press that I only found out about the plan for consolidation the day before. That's not accurate. I knew about it approximately 10 days ahead of time. I met with the Chancellor and he, he shared that plan with me. What neither one of us knew until the day before was the exact timing of when the announcement would happen. And I know I was encouraging announcing it sooner rather than later, given the fact that it was going to happen, to go ahead and share that information as soon as we could. But in fact, I was not surprised, and I knew about 10 days ahead of time. So I'd like to clarify that, because I know there's been some concern that, that I, uh, I may not have known before then, and I, in fact, I did. I can certainly understand why the Board of Regents sees benefit in combining the special purpose focused mission of Southern Polytechnic, which are with our emphasis on science, engineering, technology, architecture related fields, combining that, that very focused mission with the, the comprehensive mission that Kennesaw State University has, and I think Dan will talk about that in just a moment. Southern Polytechnic's programs have a very strong history of graduating students who are in demand in the workforce and who contribute to the economic development of the state of Georgia. And the, that quality, that, that uh, employability of the graduates of the programs here is not going to change. We're committed to excellence in all our academic programs. And I think we can also look forward to uh, to expanded curricular opportunities for students at both institutions that will, uh, that will help students currently enrolled at Southern Polytechnic and at Kennesaw State as a result of this, uh, this uh, new consolidation. As we have this, this conversation today, I also want to comment that we've talked recently a lot about the values that guide Southern Polytechnic as an institution. And those values that have, have been shown in numerous conversations and in numerous ways include the values of integrity, respect, collaboration, and, uh, and excellence. And I just want to highlight those and mention them as a background to the conversation that we're having today, particularly the collaboration and respect. I know that excellence goes without saying in all of what we do here. Um, Dan Papp is one of the people I've known longest in the state of Georgia. Um, his academic career includes 24 years at Georgia Tech, and in the year before I became president here at Southern Polytechnic State University, he served as the interim president here. So he knows um, the, the history of the institution, he knows Southern Polytechnic, and he's also worked at the University System of Georgia system office as the chief academic officer for the entire university system. He is a, a political scientist by background, um, dealing with international relations, and brings a strong academic history of his own to the role of leadership in higher education. And so I'd like to turn this over to my colleague, Dan Pat. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it. And it is good indeed to be back at Southern Poly. Uh, as Lisa said, I was president, interim president here at Southern Poly during uh, 1997 and 98. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the first time that I met Dr. Rosbacher, we had dinner together. I think it was down at the Ritz uh, when she came in to interview for the position here. Uh, so Dr. Rosbacher and I have known each other for a, a long time. Uh, I've also known about Southern Poly for a long time. 
Uh, I've been a resident of Cobb County for 40 years. Uh, even before I became interim president here at Southern Poly, uh, I knew the preceding president, uh, Dr. Steve Cheshire, extremely well. Uh, with my background in U.S. and Soviet foreign and defense policy, and with my long years at Georgia Tech, and with my time here at Southern Poly, uh, I am deeply appreciative uh, of the values of and the importance of technology, of the values of and the importance of engineering, of the values of and the importance of architecture, uh, and the related disciplines that this fine institution has. Uh, the political culture of Southern Poly, the tradition of Southern Poly, uh, whether it be Goat Day or whether it be the Goat Night Day, goat night, <laughs> the day uh, whether it be Goat Night or whether it be the bathtub races that are now human powered instead of uh, instead of powered by real engines, uh, traditions like these are central parts to this institution, and as the consolidation moves forward. Uh, these are the traditions, the traditions of uh, experience, the traditions of excellence that this institution has that will help meld the two institutions together uh, into one. Uh, one of the other factors that led the Board of Regents to uh, move towards this consolidation uh, is in fact the similarities of the student body. Uh, now, even though students here uh, are graduating substantially in, uh, in engineering and in engineering technology and uh, architecture management of computer sciences and elsewhere, uh, if you look at the entering profiles of the students, uh, both at Kennesaw and here, they are surprisingly similar. Uh, for example, the great point average of student center in Southern Polytechnic. Uh, last year it was 3.28. Uh, at Kennesaw State it was 3.20. Uh, the SAT scores uh, of the folk center in Southern Poly uh, last year was 11.45. So at Kennesaw State, 10.89. Percentage of students on hope, again, freshmen on hope, uh, at Kennesaw, 68. Uh, at Southern Poly 64. So when it comes to the student bodies, despite the differences in the majors, but again I stress the complementarity uh, of the majors offered here as compared to the majors offered for the most part at, uh, at Kennesaw State, uh, there's a great deal of similarity between the, uh, the student bodies. Uh, the, uh, the, the future of the consolidated institution, uh, from my perspective, is going to be absolutely tremendous. Uh, what will occur as consolidation moves forward? Uh, who will the beneficiaries be? Again, from my perspective, the beneficiaries of consolidation will be the students and the people of Georgia. Why? Well, the overall quantity of administrative overhead will be reduced, back office overhead will be reduced, there will be a number, a number of other duplicative functions that will be reduced. Uh, the, all of this will wind up releasing funds that will be redirected towards instruction, redirected towards educational support, and redirected towards research. Again, going right to where the rubber meets the road, the education of the students uh, of Southern Polytechnic uh, and Kennesaw State. So with that, I think I'll conclude. Uh, I will bet that there's a few questions that folks have. Let me add one, one point to reinforce what, what Dan just said, that um, any savings associated with the consolidation will be reinvested in the academic programs. This is not meant to be cost savings in order to cut the institutional budgets individually or combined. It's meant to identify additional resources to invest in the academic programs and in the education of students. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Um, we have two people with microphones on either side of the, uh, the uh, theater today. and A couple of ground rules. Uh, Dr. Ron Dempsey and I are going to handle the questions. We'll take turns on either side of the room. Um, 
if I uh, or he calls on you, please come out to the aisle. And uh, we'll, we'll hold the microphone and you'll state your name and your affiliation, like student, alumnus, faculty, staff, whatever. Okay? Shall we get started? You have a question? Amber Lawson, I'm an alumnus, and I just have a question how this merger is being presented as a foregone conclusion without the input of the community that makes up Southern Poly, the alumnus, the students, previous students, teachers. I, I feel like this move was uh, very swift and very fast without the input, particularly since this is a public institution and we're all taxpayers and we all support the school. discussing a host of consolidations for the last three or four years. Uh, there have, in fact, been discussions about uh, the concept uh, of consolidation uh, among the members of the Board of Regents. Uh, the Board of Regents is the body consisting of 19 folks that are the specific governing body of this university system of Georgia. They are the ones that are delegated constitutionally to make decisions about how the university system of Georgia is shaped, how many institutions there should be, how many institutions uh, there should not be. Uh, so again, the Board of Regents has been discussing uh, the program of consolidation for uh, 